All right, buckle up, get comfy, sit down somewhere, because it's story time. Now this is a very different style of video from what I'm used to producing, but unfortunately, due to the way this video was filmed originally, this is really the only way I can actually accurately present a good story that's interesting and entertaining to you guys. So get comfortable, like I said, because we have a lot to talk about. This story begins bright and early on Lake Travis, a central Texas lake not too far away from where I live. It's early in the morning, but not too early. I actually got a little bit of a late start because my friend and I got out of bed a little early, a little bit past our alarms. We drive out there, get to the boat ramp, start getting everything set up. Everything goes as planned, it's all usual. We get the boat down the water, get it launched. Boat trailer goes back up. We're all ready to leave. It's a beautiful day, super, super excited. We're about to head out. And something that hasn't happened in a long time ended up happening after that. I start going, thank God, we had just started leaving the ramp, nothing too crazy. And I start seeing water come coming in through the drain plug in the bottom of the boat and immediately it hits me. I did not put the plug in the boat. It's a rookie mistake and a very embarrassing one at that considering I've been doing this for a long time and I've only forgotten my plug one other time in the past and it happened to be the first time I ever took the boat out. Something I've not done in a very long time is forget the plug. I'm embarrassed to even talk about it and tell it to you guys but I just want to say someone like me who probably goes out at least three or four times a week on a boat you got to always be paying attention. I don't do a checklist in my head for that some reason this day I did not and I didn't didn't check it off and I didn't put it in so even when you use something a lot and it gets repetitive you can't you can't ever get loose and like allow yourself to be comfortable. You gotta always go through that same checklist and I didn't do that. And it cost us right from the very beginning. So we got back to the ramp and I urgently ran back up to my truck, drove it back down the ramp, got the boat back on the trailer and I let it drain. Still very, very upset and angry at myself, making a mistake that I don't ever hardly make. The boat fully drains out 30 minutes later and wow, we have a wet, soggy carpet on the boat. We're ready to go fishing. We started off by flipping docks. This time of the year when the water's getting colder, the fish will kind of relegate around docks in this lake. So we started off by doing that, throwing some little crankbaits, jigs around them to no success. So end up turning back around and heading up lake to some very familiar coves that I know I'll have great success things. I've been catching a lot of fish there recently. And just like I thought, we were able to start off the morning strong by pulling a few fish out of this cove. There we are. Not bad fish. There we are. Alrighty, we got one on the boat finally. Thank you, buddy. Pretty first fish of the day. See you later, friend. That's not gonna help our cause right there. Well, see you, bud. <laughs> that was a little largemouth. We'll count them. Easy release, and you know what? That dude probably didn't see that. That's why I said it's not gonna help our cause. Honestly, that made it the best case scenario right there. After picking a few fish off of that cove, we ended up working our way down the bank, throwing some A-rigs, and even though the conditions looked perfect, didn't manage to get on any fish. I was talking about it in the clip, but things really lined up perfectly on that stretch of bank to catch a fish on the A-rig, but to my surprise, no fish were caught. So after that, we kept on moving down. We started fishing some areas that I had fished in the weeks past, but at night, actually, I've been doing a lot of night fishing on this lake, and I wanted to try some new spots during the daytime, because always when I was out there at night, I would hear fish busting and popping off in the distance, but I hadn't actually gone off and fished the areas where I was hearing those fish bust. So finally decided, you know, we got a lot of time today. Let's go through some of these areas and run along these stickups and throw a crankbait and see if we can pull anything off of them. So now we get to the part of the story that explains everything, the climax, as you may say, the part to where everything will line up and you guys finally understand why I'm making this video and the way I am. So there I was, I'm working my way along these stickups. I'm casting a little red KVD Strike King square bill. It's a hard knock one, so it makes extra, extra loud rattling. I'm running it right through the stickups. It's a tactic I love to use on this lake. I catch a lot of great fish doing it. And well, I get on one of the best fish I've ever gotten on in this lake. So I find a really big stick up. It has probably two or three limbs coming off of it. I cast it right into the middle of that stick up, start reeling it out, and instantly my rod just stops. The line is completely tight. And for a moment, I think I'm snagged, but then what I thought was a snag starts running out back out into the lake. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not snagged. And I can't tell at first, like I know I have a fish, but I was thinking in my head, it could just be a three pounder that's absolutely dogging me, or I may have a giant. I keep on reeling, keep on fighting this fish. It gets near the boat and shines, and it is a monster. Barely hooked. I see it as it shines. One hook right in the corner of the mouth. One little treble is all that holds on to this fish between me catching it and it popping off. So I frantically start freaking out. I call to my friend, get the net, 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 get the net. This fish is barely hooked. It's a giant, it's a giant. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow. She only got one hook. 
freaking out. The fish runs right at the boat, starts peeling drag. In my mind, I'm like, there's no shot. There's no chance. It's barely hooked. There's no way I'm going to catch this fish. But I keep fighting, keep letting it run. Eventually, it gets tired. We get up to the surface. We net her. She's in the boat. And one of my greatest fish ever out of this lake is caught and landed. There we are, folks. Look at that fish. I'm jumping for joy, and as I reach down for this fish, I pull it out of the net, and I see the crankbait. The one treble that I had her by was hooked right in her jawbone, so no matter what, this fish was actually not coming off. It's just scary seeing it in the water like that, but I had her good. She wasn't coming off. This fish is an absolute beast, as you guys will see. Absolute stud. I mean, this is probably one of the bigger heads of a largemouth I've ever caught in my life. He's me. I'm still shaking. He's me shaking here. Her head and her mouth is just giant. If only she was longer. If she was longer, it's coming up PB, but still one of the better fish I caught all year. Six pounds, eight ounces. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Just look at that. This is why I come out here when it's cold. It's about 45 degrees outside. Winter is getting into full effect. But this is why you still come out and fish. Third fish in the day, and we've got a freaking stud in our hands. Let's get her back. It's gonna be hard to boot. <laughs> Cause look, I mean, I'm injured right now. I got freaking messed up Achilles. I'm in a boot and we just caught almost seven pounds. All right, let's see her off. Man, I mean, just look at that fish, dude. Golly. I saw her head come up and I was like, God, that's a monster. There she goes. See you later, girl. Nice job. As you saw in the video there, I let her go back into the deep blue water I check my camera, everything is good to go. I'm so happy. But as I go to check the camera, like I said, I look down and I see that it just started recording. I'm like, huh, that's strange. It shouldn't be recording at all. I should just stop the video clip. I go back through my recently recorded videos. There is no evidence of the catch at all. So yes, guys, I caught one of the biggest bass of my life on Lake Travis. It was a six pound, eight ounce female, really old, beautiful fish and I have no video recollection of the fight. That's why I'm making this video here today to explain it to you guys, because it was just such an awesome, amazing catch. I had to kind of fully show what happened. It was, it was too good not to make a video out of it. And thank God as well for having the photos and the videos I did of it, because if I didn't, man, I would've been so disappointed. I would've been really, really crushed about that. But we got the photos and the videos that I was hoping to get. So we have proof of it, but unfortunately, there's no evidence of actually catching the fish on camera. The fight is lost forever, as I was not even recording when I hooked up. At the end of the day, folks, as disappointing as it is, I did not get this amazing catch on camera. At least I have plenty of photos and videos to remember it by, and as well as just a great memory of the catch itself and how crazy that fight was. I mean, imagine too, say I do have it on film, but the fish pops off. I'd much rather just catch the fish and not have it on film than the opposite. So very, very happy and blessed to have caught that fish, even if it wasn't on film and, you know, bring the story to you guys like I did today. So with that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this story. I'm sorry again for missing this fish off film. Film. Very unfortunate, but I think we still got a good video out of it. I actually went on to miss the next fish off film as well. I had a pretty poor filming day altogether, but the rest of this video is just going to consist of the rest of the fish that I catch during the day while I was out there. So with that, guys, thank you for watching this video. Really hope you guys did enjoy. I will see you folks next time back out on the water. There's a fish. Okay. Number five on the day. Oh, uh, really? Well, it might not be too late now. There's our fish. We're in red, though. It's not a bad one. Another solid fish out of the same spot as earlier. Put on the crankbait. Give you guys an idea, that was relatively the same spot where I caught that really big one earlier. Came back to the spot. We have to head in here in like literally 10 minutes, but just thought I'd fish it again. I think this is definitely a spot we're gonna be fishing more in the future. There we are. Really, really healthy fish. Solid, like just shy of one and a half pounder, I would say. All right, buddy. Thank you. Cause oh, did it right there, right at the boat. That was nuts. I think it's a white bass too. It is a white bass. Yep. It's probably one of the smaller white bass I've ever caught. Cause the first little white bass I caught was right around this size, but since then, since then I've not caught a lot this small, but I'll take it. Number seven on the day, number eight overall.